Well, let me give you the verses. Matthew 8, 28 and 34. And when he was come to the other side, into the country of the Gadarenes, there met him two possessed with demons, coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thy Son of God? Art thou come here to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them a herd of many swine, so the demons besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, uh -huh. permit us to go into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when, he, and when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of the swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea uh -huh. and perished in the waters. And they that kept of them fled and went their ways into the city and told everything and what was befallen to those possessed with the demons. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart from the, uh, their borders. I don't have a subject and you know I'm used to be ashamed of that, but I feel as though that will make you study a little harder. Uh -huh. So as I've said on previous occasions, you come up with your own subject. I'll just, I'll handle the preaching. You just do the <laughs> subject work. Right. That'll make a student's want it, Pastor. Yeah. That'll make a but here we see that Jesus has come into the city. Uh -huh. And he had, he, when he came into the city, uh, he entered into a place that was close to the tombs. And in this scripture, we'll see it here. Uh, and also, I want to let you know that it's also recorded in Mark 5, 1 and 21, and Luke 8, 26 through 40. Amen. Here it says, when he came to the tombs, there were two men. Uh -huh. But when you read it over in Mark and Luke, it will say just one man. Amen. And I'm under the belief that this tomb had was not full but had more than one that was possessed with demons and in Mark and Luke they concentrate more on this one per on the individual whereas Matthew concentrates more on the situation that's going on here but when Jesus stepped in they saw him from afar off and they came and they said the Bible says that they fell down and worshiped him and these two men, let me tell you, give you an idea, they were demon-possessed men. They were out of the city dwelling in tombs. And again, you would have to read all three of the writings so you can get a better understanding and a better picture as to what is going on. But the men that were living in the tomb, the Bible has recorded that they were possessed and they would cut themselves with sharp rocks and they were, didn't have any clothes on. They were possessed by demons. They were out of their minds. And they were not allowed in the city. But there are some things in this lesson that will show us something about ourselves, possibly. And also, there, I don't want to bash a person over the head by criticizing what they are not doing. But I, I am a preacher of the gospel, so I believe that every, all good preaching not only identifies your problem, but it offers you a solution. Amen. And also, good preaching also uses the solution of Jesus Christ as the answer to all of our problems. Amen. And in this scripture, we'll see how Jesus has showed up once again. But again, we have two men here that are demon-possessed. They, they are not controlling themselves, but they are controlled by demons. Okay, now they came to Jesus, and notice they left the tombs and came to where Jesus was. And that's very important for us to look at because we have to understand these people were really still like they were Israel. And it was the custom that Israel, the Jews, were not allowed to touch dead stuff. Uh -huh. So now these demons 
were controlling these men, but yet and still, they still came to Jesus. We also need to see that these demons recognized who Jesus was. They still obeyed who Jesus was. Because again, you have to understand the demons were controlling the individuals. Again, uh, now let's look at the, de the demon possessed men when they were in the city. Again, if you read over in Mark and read over in Luke, they said that when they were in the city, they were bound with fetters and chains. When they were bound with fetters and chains, it also says that they would break them off of their hands and they would break loose. Now, if you're not careful in your reading and studying of this world, you would think that when they went into the tombs, that they were cast into, out of the city and put away in the tombs. It gives the impression that the city folks didn't want to deal with the demon possessed, and they put them in jail. Amen. But careful reading and careful study will give you a better understanding. The jail that they were placed in while they were in the city were the fetters and the chains. The fetters and the chain were handcuffs and chains which the handcuffs will bound you from not being able to do what you want to do the chains were tied into stakes and kept you, them from going all of the cities and where they wanted to go but then again they were so demonically uh, uh, possessed that they would break off the chains and they would break off the fetters and what I'm trying to get you to understand is that the world has a system of how they try to control those that are not doing what the world thinks that they ought to be doing. Amen. Let me tell you in another fashion. The, the chains and fetters was the jail. Right. It was the rehabilitation centers. It was the, um, when, because the people were demon possessed meaning that they lost their mind and their inability, they had an inability of controlling themselves. Well, and the world today, when we find individuals that way, the first thing we do is we want to incarcerate them yeah. by putting them in prison. And that's why I say the fetters and the chain was a form of imprisonment. Mm -hmm. And then also, if it gets too bad, then we want to medicate them. Uh -huh. And then and most of the time, those that are possessed in this way and those that are, are not succumbing to the medication, they refuse to even take it in this day and this time. Amen. And then also, they go to psychologists and therapists. They have you to sit down and express what your problems are in life. Yeah. But if we are to be honest with ourselves, none of this is working. If you look at our prisons on today, 80% of all prisoners that are serving hard criminal time for felonies and things of that nature are repeat offenders. So the jails can't hold them. That's the fetters and chains. When they sit down with the therapist, if you sit down and talk to some of these people long enough, they'll have you to believe that you're crazy. So what's going on is the world system of handling a person that can't control himself and a person that's out of his mind, that, that they do not have an answer or a solution. It's something that we laugh about now, but it is a serious matter. And, and I like to say, because I'm dealing with it now on dealing with people, because I preach in different places, and we used to preach about preach to people that just had an alcohol problem or just was stubborn and hard-headed. But now we have to preach about being bipolar, PTSD, ADD, ADHD, and all the other A's and D's that you can find. And now the approach to this problem is different from what we normally have to deal with. But then again, just look at the world. They, when the when the demon-possessed men were in the tombs, it wasn't that the, the people in the city sent them out into the tombs. Uh -huh. It was that the demonic spirit led them into the tombs. Amen. Now let's look at what's going on in the tombs. In the tombs is where dead folks were. Well, right. Isn't it something when the only people that you can get along with is the ones that can't talk back to you? Oh, it's something when you feel like the only people that you're comfortable with being around are those that are really no longer there. Amen. And what Satan does to in the individual on today, now we see a host of them. If we just step outside of the doors, 
they are living in tombs. Uh -huh. If you go downtown, you'll see them under the bridges. Well, you'll see them refusing to live in society as a productive citizen. Uh -huh. In their minds, everybody that's being productive and doing what's right is the wrong person to be around. Uh -huh. They choose to be amongst themselves. They choose to be around what is dead and what is dark. And that's why you see them homeless again and you see them off to themselves. And, and when you see them, they're usually talking to someone, but nobody is there. That's because they are under the state of mind that nobody really believes in them, trusts them, or can guide them in any, any kind of way. But then again, before I get any further, I want to talk about demonic possession. Uh -huh. Demonic possession, again, we're, uh, we're in the time here where the Jews were still dealing with who God really was. Uh -huh. And what happened, what at that time, the Holy Spirit would come upon man. And then he would show them and reveal things unto them. Uh -huh. So when, with that being said, they were able to be demonic possessed. Uh -huh. Now we as believers are indwelt with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now that the Holy Spirit is in us, then he says that I won't dwell in an unclean temple. And I like to say just because he's already in me, the Holy Spirit is already leading me and guiding me, there is no room for demonic possession. So therefore, Jesus does not have to perform miracles and wonders as he did for the Jews, for those that are in the grace age. And that's why he calls preachers now and not people that perform exorcisms. So when you go to these churches and they're touching you on your head, getting this demon out of you, be very, very careful. Because a lot of times I've noticed that when they touch you on the head, it knocks you out. And just to make you feel a little better, don't be careful who you fall out around because he just might dig in your pockets. I just thought I'd wake you up. Be very careful of the doctrinal teachings. And then speaking on doctrinal teachings, let's take a look at what the demonic people said when they came to Jesus and fell down to worship him. The first thing they said when they came to him was, Jesus, thou son of God, what have we to do with thee? Is it not our time? Even the demon knows who God is. And if you're not careful in the study of this word, you would have the impression that it was the man who came and was talking to Jesus. But I'm here to tell you that it was the demon speaking through the man. And that's why it sounded like a Christian speaking, because he said the Son of God, which really was recognizing him as God. The devil himself, which was legion, which was many, spoke to him and said, oh, son of God. Yeah. Let's go back to 2015 because I might be losing somebody. <laughs> right. Isn't it ironic that those that don't believe in God and those that don't go to church can quote more scripture than those that do go to church and those that do believe in God? But I'm here to tell you there is a great separation between the believer and the unbeliever. I don't care how much word you know, it's about how much you live. And I've made up in my mind that I'm going to preach, I'm going to live more sermons than I've ever preached. Because I get a chance to preach on Sundays and sometimes Tuesdays and Wednesdays every now and then. But every day I get a new opportunity to live a sermon. And that's the separator because the devil himself can tell me something about scripture because he is very familiar with it. But there's one thing about it, he can't live what I can live. Because in order to live, to learn to serve God, you first must believe he is. The one who hung, who bled, and died for you. And that separates me from any unbeliever. So it makes no difference about how much scripture you know. Because the first thing I'm going to tell you is to end all of this conversation, show me how much you can live. I know who God is. And I know what God can do. And I'm standing on his promises. I'm standing on his word. And just because you can tell me what scripture is, again, I can show you. You can tell me that I ought to love. But I can show you how to love. And as the young people say, if you don't believe me, just watch me. I've made, and many of you ought to make it up in your mind that I'm going to show this world what God is. I'm going to be a servant and not just one that quotes scripture. But I'm veering off from what I intended to go. 
So let's get back to the tombs. He said, thou son of God, why has thou come? Is it not our time to be tormented? And I'm not going to preach long. Your, your pastor did all the hooping and shouting that we need on today. And what has happened was now we know that it is the demon speaking through the man. Now they tried some trickery. The demon said, well, God, he said, who art thou? And that's when he spoke up and said, I'm legion because I'm many. And then he said, his God decided that he was going to cast them out. And when he cast them out, they said, well, Father, if you're going to cast us out, let us go into the swine. When they went into the swine, the Bible records that they ran off the steep cliff and drowned themselves. Now, this is very interesting and is quite humorous when you really understand what's going on. The devil thought he was being slick. And what caught me was the animals, the swine. Now, again, they were under Jewish custom. And do you know that they weren't supposed to be partaking of swine? I wondered, where did these swine come from? What was happening, what had happened was the church folks was trying to be slick and they had swine outside of the city. And when they thought Jesus wasn't paying attention, they were sneaking off and getting a little pork in that system. And isn't that like church folks on today? When we think Jesus is not paying attention to us, we kind of slide to the left. And, and, and all I'm doing is talking about what we do sometimes in our home. Pastor, we holy up in here. But like I've heard you say, what have you been watching on your TV? What have you been looking at in your telephone? What kind of pictures, if we were to check, what kind of pictures would we find in your phone? And what the children, again, the children was, they had the swine outside of the city. They worshiped in the temples on the inside. But every now and then they would slide out and get them a piece of bacon. Now, now what the devil was trying to do, and this is what some commentaries would say. First, the commentaries would say that Jesus was trying to kill two birds with one stone. When he allowed the demons to go into the swine, he was taking the sin away from them that they had been committed. So he was doing the people a favor, and he was also getting rid of the demons. But I'm here to tell you, I don't go with that theory because God never has to counteract what the Satan has put before him. God is God, and God is God all by himself. God already knew how to deal with the children of Israel, just like he knows how to deal with you and I. And he doesn't have to counteract on what the devil thinks he's trying to be slick about. Now, the, the devil, what he was doing, and he thought he even succeeded with it, he said, let us go into the swine. And then when they got into the swine, they ran down the cliff and they drowned themselves. And what happened was, when, the, when th that happened, those that were taking care of the swine went back to the city and told all that they had done. Now let's look at what has been done. God has delivered the man from demon, demonic possession. The Bible said that now he was clothed and in his right mind. What a great miracle. What a great wonder has taken place. Also, he said that the swine, got, the demons went into the swine and they drowned into the sea. But again, please read Mark and Luke's account of this story. Because when the people came out to where Jesus was, they saw the man clothed and in his right mind. And it was as even as if they did not even care about what was going on. The first thing they said was the swine are gone. Jesus, you need to leave. They weren't even considered that God had performed a miracle. God had made some citizens out of people that you couldn't even control. That you didn't want anything to do that. And now they're clothed and in their right mind. And the Bible said that the man even wanted to follow Jesus. Not only has he come from an addiction of drugs. Or not only had he been delivered from being a murderer and a killer. A violent citizen in society. Now he's a productive citizen in society. Now he's able to teach you about what thus says the Lord. And the scripture records that if they never even considered what was going on in this man's life. The people were more considered about what had happened to their swine. And may I suggest to you today that that's how some of us are today. 
we're really not concerned with the miracles that God has done for us uh -huh. because we're in here today and we're taking it for granted that God has put breath in our body. Yeah. He has changed us and made us better. Well. But really, we just want to get back to our sin. Yeah. We want to be healthy. When God delivers you uh -huh. and he puts running in your feet yeah. and he puts a voice, put a word in your voice, we don't usually use it for what God has intended for us. When he puts us, some of us, I'm not going to put everybody in that same boat, but some of us, when we get healthy, back to happy hour, we're going. When we get a voice, we're going to sing the blues before we sing anything about his amazing grace. And I know some of you may get upset with me about it, but I have to tell you where a child can understand and a fool need not error. You ought to be thankful unto him that has clothed you and put you in your right mind and now I'm about to lose my mind because I'm getting a little happy about what God has done for me because I look back over my life and I think about the time that I was in a tomb and maybe you can identify with me because maybe you were in a tomb you were in a world of darkness you may have been in the tomb and suffering from the sin of addiction Maybe you've been suffering with alcohol and you've been in that tomb of darkness and maybe you've been in that tomb of depression not knowing what you're going to do and where you're going to go. Maybe you've given up on life and you just don't understand if there's a God or not. But I'm so glad that I looked out of the tomb and when I looked out of the tomb I was just like the possessed man. I looked up and I saw Jesus. I saw Jesus hanging on a hill called Calvary. On that cross he hung, he bled, and he died. And, and I went up to the cross and I kneeled before him. And now I'm clothed and I'm in my right mind. I'm clothed, I tell you. And what did he clothe me with? I got the helmet of salvation on now. I've got a breastplate of righteousness on now. I'm preparated with the gospel in my shoes right now. I'm so glad that God is able to fix me and bring me out of darkness. And maybe you need to come out of darkness. And, and Jesus is no longer on the cross. He's no longer in the grave. But he rose again with all power of heaven and earth in his hand. This God that has delivered the possessed. He's able to deliver you too. There's a great lesson in this word on today. He's able to deliver you from whatever it is that has a hold of you. And I'm telling you now that the Holy Spirit is indwelt in us now. We're no longer able to be possessed. But what happens now is he will oppress us. He'll grab a hold to us and influence us. And now what we do, what we will do in error is grieve the Holy Spirit or quench the Holy Spirit. We'll grieve the Holy Spirit by not doing what he asks us to do. And we will, we will quench him by not doing what he tells us to do. Amen. So now we're in that land. We're in the land of no more. We're in the land where we need to understand that we're tired and we're fed up with sin. Walk away from it. I told you I'm not going to do much hollering on today. And I'm about out of gas. I'm a young preacher. But I want you to clearly understand that you don't have to stand in depression, addiction, uh, that's ADD, ADHD. The preacher can't perform an exorcism for you. But he can do just like what was done here in this time. He can preach Jesus and you can come to Jesus and he'll clothe you and put you in your right mind. And when he clothes you and place you in your right mind, don't forget to tell the next man. Because I told you earlier, in Matthew it records two men. There's somebody else still in the tomb. There's somebody else still struggling. Somebody else needs to know the deliverer the way that you found the deliverer. That's your job. God bless you and God keep you.